Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Larry's 15 where you've tuned in for a Royal Ascot special where I'll be giving us not a lucky 15 this time but a lucky 63 for tomorrow each way for all six races at Ascot. We'll be going through those shortly but just going to reflect on how today's selections ran. Not too bad, we did it each way so we had a win and a place. We had Rosebury at Nottingham, not a bad performance there and um, Sylvester just managed to get home for us on that one. We also had... Um, Indian Warrior at Windsor, again nearly won, only just lost um, by um, a horse chasing it down towards the end of the race there, so it came second, so that placed, we backed it at a better price than it ended up going off in the final SP, so all in all we got our money back today, and the other horses that ran were Mythagas, uh, um, Weatherby, I think that's how you pronounce it, one of the Godolphin runners for Syed Ben Sura. He never won at Weatherby before, and he still hasn't won at Weatherby, because that horse didn't run very well today. Pretty much an experiment, probably, in the end, running over a mile and six furlongs. Hadn't shown that it was definitely going to stay the trip, but it was worth a gamble, at least. It made its handicap debut. Ran well, it was prominent for a while, quite a way, but... Ultimately, it didn't stay the trip, and it's definitely not the trip for this horse. And we also had Dylan, which was quite a big gamble, landed throughout the day. I got it 5-1 to one last night, ended up going something very short in the end, but he didn't um, come into fruition today. But to be fair, he was coming back from a break, but I did mention that in our vlog last night, that that could be concerned, but I thought it wasn't to worry, but obviously it was. But anyway, enough of how today's uh, horses ran. We're going to get stuck into um, an exciting few days ahead at Royal Ascot. And we're going to be doing a lucky, uh, lucky 63, I should say, tomorrow. Each way covering all six races. And we're going to get stuck in tomorrow with the first race on the card in the 2.30 in the Queen Anne Stakes. Which on paper currently looks like it's one-way traffic with Ribchester. But I think he could be a little bit vulnerable at that kind of price. I think he's around about 4-5 to five at the moment. I have noticed he has been drifting slightly. I think you can get him at evens if you really fancy him tomorrow. So um, take that price now probably because he'll probably end up going off a bit shorter than that tomorrow. But the horse that I've selected here and is also quite a tipped horse to uh, maybe upset the form tomorrow is a horse called Mutakayev, which is a Godolphin runner. One of the other Godolphin horses in the race, because Ribchester is Godolphin as well. It's owned by William Haggis and uh, will be ridden by um, Jim Crowley, the champion jockey, who's probably going to have to put in a lot of work to retain his champion um, crown this year. But I thought this horse was very interesting at um, a price. Around about 7-1, to one, I got it out earlier, but it's been nibbled out already to 6-1, to one, so it'd be interesting to see if there's any more market support for it. It ran really well um, last year, had a really good campaign. It's a course and distance when a Ascot over a mile. It has been experimented over a mile and two, over seven furlongs, and also I think possibly a mile and four, but it seems like the mile is definitely its go-to trip, the one that it likes the best and consistently wins at. And again, I think tomorrow, this race being run over a mile in the Queen Anne's, 7-1 to one at the moment, and with each way element, I definitely think he's going to put in a really good, big, bold run here, and he could give Ribchester a really hard time, who um, has got one or two questions to answer with, with the ground being this firm. So yeah, that's definitely um, a horse to keep an eye on tomorrow. Our uh, second selection tomorrow sees us go to the Coventry in the 305, and again, we've actually selected a William Haggis horse here, and it's a bit of an outsider, this one, at 28 to 1. Um, you might think, what the hell am I doing here? But the horse I've gone for is Headway, which is going to be ridden by Pat Cosgrave, who's a pretty good jockey. Now, this horse is actually quite interesting. It's uh, running over six furlongs in this race, and there are a few good horses running in this race tomorrow. Uh, one that's been backed quite a lot is De Bruyne Horse uh, by Richard Hannon. Now, that horse we have backed on the channel, and it did win at Epsom that day, was our only winner that day, I think it was on Derby Day, so um, that wasn't a bad selection there, but we're going to be going against it tomorrow. There's also a few other good horses on paper here that you definitely think will run very well tomorrow, but the reason I thought this horse was quite interesting was because it won at Chester uh, last time out in a really pretty good race, and it had a very wide draw, and it came round the outside, and it stayed on really well, and it came from behind the pace and showed a good turn of foot to come home and win very comfortably in the end and looked like it definitely was running 
well over six furlongs, and that was definitely the distance for it. Same again in its previous race at, um, at Newbury, where it finished um, second. Started off a bit slowly, but absolutely ran on very well in its debut and finished um, very strongly. So I definitely think Hebway, if you look into it, if you want to go away from this vlog, look at the stats about it, it could be maybe a, not a bad each way value tomorrow in a, like a multiple bet if you're thinking of doing a similar one to what we've done here. So that's who our second selection is going to be in the Coventry tomorrow. Our third selection tomorrow sees us... Um, Go to the King Stand in the 340 at Ascot. Now again, pretty tricky race on paper. A few interesting contenders. The horse that we've gone for here is Marsha, which is Sir Mark Prescott and Luke Morris teaming up for this one. Now this horse is um, in very good form. It won its seasonal reappearance at Newmarket in a pretty good race. Just beat in Washington, D.C. An Aino O'Brien horse. And that form... Looks like it's not too bad. He's going to meet a few other um, horses that were in that race tomorrow. One of the other horses, I think it was a Robert Cow horse. I nearly um, backed. I think it's called Gold, Golden Dream or something. I can't remember the name of that horse. But I was possibly going to go for that one. But I think that one is a bit exposed. And it probably will run a good race tomorrow. But um, I don't think it probably will quite win the race. And I definitely think Marsha makes more appeal on paper. It had a really good campaign as well towards the end of last season, winning in Chantilly in France, so that was pretty good there. And it's carried on really good on its seasonal reappearance. And I definitely think at 10-3 to 3 tomorrow, that's a pretty good price for a favourite at the moment. I think some bookmakers are paying um, five places each way tomorrow. That's uh, what we've done, actually. We've gone with Sky Bet tomorrow. Our normal bookmaker is Betfred for the treble the odds, uh, one winner consolation. But I definitely think you need to shop around if you fancy a bit of each way with some of these big handicap fields because not all bookmakers offer like five or six uh, places they're paying out on each way on a race. So um, I would definitely take that into consideration tomorrow if you're having a, a multiple bets at Royal Ascot. Our um, fourth selection uh, for tomorrow sees us go to the St. James's um, race in the 420. Now this one on paper is between two horses, pretty much Churchill and Barney Roy. Churchill is a great horse, been in great form. Won really well in the Guineas, and um, he did meet this horse, Barney Roy, which uh, we'll get on to in a minute, because that's the one I've backed. But Churchill, he's definitely going to be the one to beat tomorrow. He's got a great record. I think he won at Ascot last year as well. So um, that's the Aiden O'Brien horse and Ryan Moore teaming up for that one. Ryan Moore's got a great um, record aboard Churchill. I think he was six wins from seven rides, so that's pretty impressive there. But I think he's just a, maybe a little bit vulnerable at such a short price. I think he's four to six on with the makers at the moment. And when he ran at Newmarket in the Guineas, it wasn't the most convincing performance in the world. He did enough, but that's all you've got to do. Just do enough on the day to win. But Barney Roy was a little bit unlucky in that race. And he finished on quite well. He kind of lost his stride towards about two furlongs out. But he ran on really w well towards the end. And he could have maybe in another half furlong. So just maybe come and give him Churchill a run for his money. And I definitely think if it's a more fair, even race tomorrow, Barney Roy, again, could cause Churchill a bit of aggravation. He won the Greenham Stakes at um, Newbury, which um, Frankel has previously won, which was a great horse, as we all know. Um, and that f f record from that race seems to stand up well to produce great horses. And I think Barney Roy, again, is an exception. He's Richard Hannon horse. And he's going to be ridden by James Doyle. Richard, Han Richard Hannon is a very good trainer. I like Richard Hannon's horses. He's been in good form of late as well. James Doyle's a good, experienced jockey. Rides a lot for Godolphin as well, all around the world. So I definitely think that is not a bad uh, shout tomorrow. Not 9 to 4 at the moment, if you fancy Barney Roy. Hopefully, he might drift out because Skybet do offer the little bit better SP. But I definitely think Barney Roy, if it's a more fair race and he runs a good race, he could pip. Uh, Churchill throwing a little bit of surprise there but let us know what you think about on that race Churchill you would say is probably most people's bankers uh, for tomorrow but um, yeah let us know what you think on that one our um, fifth uh, selection tomorrow is in the five o'clock at Ascot with um, again a pretty wide open race on paper it's the Ascot stakes over two miles and four furlongs a lot of um Actual um, hurdlers on um, in this race. I know Nicky Henderson's got one, an ex um, 
flat horse returning to the flat for quite a few years but that is of Galileo obviously you might be attracted to the pedigree there beyond conceit has been very good on the hurdles for Nicky Henderson over the last few months he's going to be ridden by Jamie Spencer tomorrow and I was tempted to go down with that horse but um the other horse that really caught my eye uh, maybe slightly of a bigger price is um a horse called Rainbow Dreamer now I've always liked this horse even over jumps it's been pretty good for Alan King, who um, trains this horse over jumps. And it had a really good uh, reappearance on the flat at Newbury over two miles and two furlongs, which was quite a good sharp test for this horse. And he hasn't been whacked up too heavy by the handicapper. He's still nicely weighted tomorrow against some of his rivals. He probably will like the up in trip. And he's definitely got that class pedigree when it comes to um, just racing on a flat. So I definitely think at a price tomorrow, around about 14 to 1, 16 to 1, you can get him, I've seen with some bookmakers. He could be in with a chance tomorrow. He's got Andrea Zaney on board, who's not a bad jockey. And again, he could be a good uh, good bet tomorrow each way if you fancy him, like I do. Our last selection tomorrow sees us go to the last race of Royal Ascot. Hopefully we'll be five out of five from this point with winners, but I doubt it. But it's the Windsor Castle Stakes tomorrow in the last race. And the horse that we've gone for here is, again, another outsider. A horse called Marching On Together. Round about 25 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment. It, I can't remember if it's called... Um, it's like something like Love and Declaration or, or something, or ever the horse that's the current favourite at the moment. It's uh, Aino O'Brien horse, I definitely know that. But I can't remember its name off the top of my head right now. I think it's Declaration of Love is what it, I think it's called. Anyway, that horse tomorrow is 3-1. to Now it's got some smart connections, won well um, on its only win at Dundalk over quite a few lengths. So that was a very good performance there. But he hasn't raced for a while. He's um, not won on turf yet out of his two runs. But he obviously has got classy connections. But I thought this horse, marching on together, could be quite interesting for the following reasons. It's Ivan Furtado and Martin Harley, which is not a bad jockey and um, a trainer combination. But this horse uh, ran at Leicester in a Phillies maiden which has produced some subsequent winners, quite a few winners from that race, and it won quite nicely over the trip and the ground. So that's already one for this horse in the bag. I definitely think this horse has got some good room for improvement with the form especially, and quite a big price. I thought he could just be an each way gamble worth taking. So yeah, he could not do too badly tomorrow, this horse marching on together. And hopefully he'll be marching on together tomorrow for some good profit for us. But as I've made all six predictions, what I think will run well at Ascot tomorrow, probably none of them will turn up. And it will probably be your same old favourites like Ribchester and Churchill turning up, winning, and probably a few surprises along the way that nobody saw, a few 33 to 1 here and there. And everybody be like, well, why did you back those horses? But I've given you my reasons why I think those horses will run well tomorrow. We're going to be doing a lucky 63 each way over the next uh, few days, which will be at Royal Ascot, covering the majority of the races there. So um, keep an eye out for our daily vlogs. Also as well, you can subscribe to our channel here at Lucky Loaders 15 Please subscribe to the channel. I'm ultimately hoping to be a horse racing journalist in the near future. Going back to university to do a sports journalism course in a master's there. So um, hopefully we will get better, more experience and the better quality of our videos will show. So I'll keep on doing that. Also as well, you can like us on Facebook at Lucky Loads 15 Follow us on Twitter. We're more active on Twitter than we are Facebook, if I'm going to be honest. So um you can follow us there. Also, gamble responsibly. Hopefully you have a good day at Royal Ascot tomorrow if you fancy a bet there. And we'll see you soon.